my name is Min Chiu Sang. Uh, uh, you know, our topic is uh, developing Android Context Hub, hub uh, Runtime Environment, CHIE, Nano App in WebAssembly. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's been a pretty long day already, and I think this is the last session, so thank you for sticking around. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, the first author of this book, Jian, Jin, uh, Jian Qiang Li, uh, he's actually in PRC, so he cannot travel here. So uh, I'm just, uh, you know, cover the topic for him. Okay, so uh, here's what the agenda looks like. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, what is uh, CHIE and what are the nano apps that, that, that we are talking about that to, you know, moving to WebAssembly, right? And uh, what is the value of uh, converting them to WebAssembly? And what kind of challenge do we have, you know, for, uh, for migrating the nano app to WebAssembly? And, and then we'll present our architecture, which, uh, you know, involve like a solution to uh, multiple of those challenges. And, and then, you know, we can summarize on the project learning that we have. Yeah, so um, there have been like a, quite a few, you know, very interesting uh, embedded talk in this conference already uh, from, you know, uh, Bosch in the morning and uh, Siemens, uh, you know, they all talk about WebAssembly uh, running in like a really resource constrained environment. Uh, so here's another opportunity for us to push, you know, WebAssembly to the bleeding edge. That is this Android uh, uh, CHIE environment. So if you look at the right diagram here, you know, this is the typical Android software stack. Uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, most people probably are familiar with the left side, which is the Android application framework. And, uh, you know, Android app running on top of the, the, the framework. But not a lot of people know like there's a sec second computing environment within your Android phone, which is the context hub uh, that is uh, running on uh, MCU on a very resource constrained environment. And uh, you have the, you know, basically a bare minimum scheduling capability for the CHIE, which is like a loud, round robin, you know, uh, uh, task running system. Uh, so it's pretty much, you know, like a, a bare metal environment uh, for nano app to run on the right side of it. So why do we need to have this kind of environment, right? Uh, so if you look at the bottom, you know, this example, like if you have your earphone, you want to pair with Android phone, and your, if your phone has a CHIE system, you can get paired with your phone immediately. Unlike like, uh, you know, if you have like a really old phone that doesn't have a CHIE, uh, you need to wake up your application processor and, uh, and then, you know, you finish the pairing and you end up wasting a lot of your battery power just for this purpose, right? So the CHIE environment is a low power, always, always on, always running environment. And uh, that's the reason that it runs on, you know, really pretty weak processing unit, MCU, and uh, an extremely limited, you know, resource environment. Uh, you know, typical CHIE environment, you will get uh, maybe a few hundred kilobytes of, of a memory uh, as compared to your phone. You know, main phone, you probably get at least, you know, eight gig or 16 or even more. So those CHIE nano app, they are all very small application. They do like a specific task, you know, pairing is an example, like when, you uh, receive some Bluetooth signal and uh, you have, you know, Bruce Nano app kick, kicking off and uh, does the processing for pairing or any additional tasks that need to be done. And uh, then you finish the task and then you, you know, uh, the CPU, the uh, MCU back to the uh, dispatch scheduler. And uh, there's a tremendous uh, amount of challenge in this space. You know, uh, we all know like there's a huge app ecosystem for Android phone, but you probably have not heard about nano app ecosystem, right? Uh, so there's a reason for that because this is, you know, pretty difficult to program. It's a uh, near bare metal environment and uh, Google itself doesn't really open it up to app developer for, for this. And it's basically, you know, the Google built-in nano app 
and uh, some OEM uh, nano app that are allowed to run in this environment. Uh, so um, the opportunity is very clear. Right? If we move this environment to WebAssembly, then you can open that. You can have all the, the WebAssembly benefit, and you can open the ecosystem to uh, innovation by the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the complete uh, community of uh, developers, right? The Android developer. So we all heard about you know, the advantage of WebAssembly uh, quite a few times. Uh, you know, uh, today, for example, through multiple talks. Uh, there is sandbox security, so you don't need to worry about one nano app, you know, uh, trashing another nano app of memory, right? So that's one example because they are maybe, you know, most likely they are from different vendors. They do different things. And uh, there's also cross-platform and the cross-architecture advantage of WebAssembly. So currently, you know, this MCU is non-standard, so everybody does its own thing. So it could be, you know, a, a MCU from um, uh, Texas instrument, instrument or from some other company. So there's a variety of companies that are doing all different architecture. And uh, so then typically, you know, you need to recompile everything uh, targeting a specific hardware. Uh, and, uh, uh, and the C++ is the only language they can use to compile this, uh, uh, you know, for this environment. So obviously, you know, if you can use WebAssembly for this purpose, then you can open that to all kinds of language, even those like a modern, you know, managed runtime languages. Yeah, so that's the kind of a motivation we have uh, to, you know, to basically to build uh, this project. So it's basically, you know, CHIE on WebAssembly. So that's the project that we are building. And uh, so our design goal is to compile unmodified nano app, uh, you know, source code to WebAssembly and then run it on CHIE. And uh, we basically say that, uh, you know, you should not need to change anything to your source code in order to compile to WebAssembly. And uh, you need to maintain the existing, uh, you know, nano app lifecycle. And uh, you should have, uh, you know, interoperability between the native nano app and the WebAssembly based nano app, so they can talk to each other. Because we don't expect uh, you know wholesale instant replacement of all the native app with WebAssembly. So there might be a you know migration process. Uh, so this interoperability is actually very important. So uh, I have provided here a GitHub you know uh, link uh, for this project. So if you're interested, you know um, go go to that site and. Uh, take a look at what we have implemented, and you know, you're welcome to contribute to this project. So another thing to, uh, uh, to talk about is that the, you know, this project is based on uh, WebAssembly micro runtime, or WAMR. Uh, so you probably heard about WAMR multiple times uh, you know, today, through multiple talks. So like, uh, it's a pretty popular uh, web assembly runtime. We actually started uh, about four years ago at Intel, and then we donated that to Bike Alliance. So it's one of the two uh, uh, web assembly runtime uh, in uh, Bike Alliance. And uh, it gained quite a bit of attraction in the industry, you know, especially uh, with uh, multiple customers. You know, you've probably heard of like, uh, Amazon Prime Video using Wammer and uh, Siemens and uh, Sony and and the Bosch, you know, they mentioned that they're using a WAM as well. Uh, so yeah, so the reason for that, that the, you know, this runtime is, uh, uh, is implemented in C and, uh, uh, you know, uh, has a very small footprint, a high performance. Uh, so th th that basically, you know, make it like a really suitable for resource constrained environment, such as the CHIE. And uh, it has, you know, multiple, uh, execution mode, you can do it in interpreter or just in time, in time compiler or even ahead of time compiler. So those, uh, any of those things that you can, can use and uh, support the worthy libc and, uh, and the worthy, uh, you know, for neural network as well. So that's a kind of motivation um, 
for you know using grammar for this purpose because uh, as I said you know the CHI inf environment is actually extremely resource constrained you know typically it's only you know a few hundred k by to a maximum of two meg of memory available in this environment. Uh, so um, let's take a look at how CHIE uh, NanoVac works. Uh, so, um, so the CHIE basically you know, uses like a, a shared memory concept, and it has a global uh, shared uh, you know, heat uh, that uh, they use to pass data between different nano apps and the, between the CHIE and the nano app system. And uh, there's also an event queue. Uh, so, uh, you know, any time like a sensor detects something, you know, you uh, basically generate event and uh, a nano app can also generate event as well. And the event, are, you know, basically being processed one by one and, uh, uh, and the dispatch basically, you know, call into appropriate callback time, callback functions uh, in uh, different, uh, you know, uh, nano app uh, callback functions. And after you are all done, there's a, also a like a free function that you can free the event from the heap, so that uh, you don't you know run out of your heap space. So that's kind of a, uh, you know how the nano app works. So basically, it's like a uh, round robin uh, you know scheduling uh, system and uh, processing like a, a function call by function call based on event trigger, uh, you know uh, and. Uh, once uh, you know it's done, then the next nano app is get uh, scheduled to run on the on the MCU. Okay, so uh, let's think about this kind of system. So now we want to uh, move it to WebAssembly, right? Uh, so there's uh, quite a few challenges here. You know, first one is that uh, we need to ensure that uh, you know the data structure, for example, the event data that the people are passing around between nano app and the CHGA system, they need to have exact identical structure. That's one, right? And because the reason for that, the, you know, uh, your WebAssembly ecosystem use different compilers than you know typically used by the the uh, CHGA system. Uh, so different flag in different compilers, they may generate like a different order of the same structure. And uh, so we need to have mechanism to ensure that they have analytical structure. So the second challenge is that uh, you know it's quite common uh, for CHIE system to have uh, multi-layer definition uh, of a sensor data structure or uh, event data structure. Uh, you know they have like a, a structure within a structure or pointer within it, and uh, we all know like a web assembly is linear memory based, so that's a need to translate back and forth between the two uh, representation system. And uh, uh, so another problem is that the, if you convert nano app into web assembly, uh, and we know that the you know, nano uh, web assembly has this uh, sandbox environment, and you cannot access memory outside your linear memory space, right? So that's the good things about web assembly, that's security measure that, that we built into the spec. Uh, but now it's become a problem because uh, you know the CHIE nano system use a global heap to pass data between different nano app between CHIE and the nano app. So we need to have solution for that. And uh, also the, on the reverse direction, say this event that need to trigger a callback function in a nano app, you know you need to have a way to call into a web assembly function, right? So uh, that's also you know. Uh, uh, it's like it violated the WebAssembly modularity uh, requirement. So those are the things that, that we need to resolve. So let's talk about a solution. Uh, so the first one, you know, uh, we basically use a you know a common solution, basically use the static assert into the nano app application to make sure that the uh, you know all those uh, structures. A lay, you know, layout identical. Uh, so, uh, for example, like uh, you specify the size uh, of the, uh, you know, the sensor uh, information data, and uh, offset of each of the individual field. So they need to be identical. So if it's not, then you know, the, at least the compiler can catch that, uh, catch that bug, and uh, 
you can change your compilation flag appropriately to make sure that uh, it's consistent and uh, doesn't fail the assert. Okay, so the first solution, uh, you know, it's fairly straightforward. So what about the multi-layer pointer in the, in the sensor segment, right? Uh, so, um, so here, you know, we basically say, uh, let's introduce a wrapper that's running uh, inside, uh, you know, uh, this the middle layer between the nano app space, which is WebAssembly, and the CHA, which is native. Uh, so, um, so the key point here is that this wrapper can be called by the uh, WebAssembly runtime on top, and also behaving as a, a native nano app, so it has access to all those uh, uh, scheduling and uh, dispatching capability of the underneath layer. So that's exactly what we did, and we have a nano app uh, and a wrapper here, and uh, and the you know basically uh, for a uh, a, a multi-layer structure, uh, this uh, you know wrapper is responsible for replicating uh, the native structure, which is you know name here, into the linear memory space, and then you know calculate the appropriate offset of that field. Uh, in the uh, web assembly structure. Okay, so um, so the second issue is that uh, you know how do we pass event from the native app, uh, native nano app to web assembly handler? Uh, so similarly, you know we built a a, a basically a, a wrapper for each nano app. So uh, it's a one-to-one -one correspondence, and and when the event happens in the CHA layer, it will actually call into this function, you know, this event handler within the uh, the uh, the wrapper, and uh, then this wrapper basically uh, make a copy of the sensor of the you know event data, and uh, and make a copy in the linear memory. And then it calls the appropriate WebAssembly, uh, you know, function handler, so that it knows that uh, which area to look for inside the linear memory and the process the, the, the event data appropriately. And uh, of course, you know, after the call is completed, uh, the CHI can call the free call to uh, deallocate the space. Okay, so this question, you know, it's kind of an opposite of what I just described. Uh, so this is for uh, WebAssembly now that I have to send the event. Uh, so uh, the, you know, basically the reverse order what we just talked about. Uh, you know, this water nano app will actually, you know, call this wrapper, uh, event wrapper, uh, and uh, this event wrapper then, you know, it's res responsible for, uh, you know, uh, Converting the event data and a cop make a copy into the native CHIE environment, and then you know this wrapper will call the appropriate event you know event uh, uh, you know uh, handler for the uh, for the uh, event data that uh, that got passed into the CHIE environment. Okay, so. Uh, in summary, you know this is our uh, architecture. Uh, so uh, we have nano app uh, that's written, uh, compiled into WebAssembly, running at the top layer, and uh, the, we have the WebAssembly micro runtime running, and uh, then there is the intermediate layer that run a bunch of wrapper. You know we talk about like a data mapping, you know event data and. Uh, a nano app wrapper for each nano app, and there's a like a per sensor wrapper, such as audio wrapper, uh, you know, Bluetooth slow energy wrapper. Uh, so all those wrapper, uh, you know, for facilitating the communication between the CHI environment and the, the uh, web, web assembly based nano app. And at the bottom, it's uh, you know the original CHI CHI environment with all those different sensor drivers, you know, uh, things like that. 
Yeah, so that's our architecture. OK, so I'm going to do um, some two small demo here. So on the left, you know, basically, uh, we have a CH, CH, CH emulator running on Linux. And uh, we have a test program that initializes all the different sensors and then you know, uh, registers themselves with those events. And then when the sensor detect event, you know, those callback functions get called and, uh, and the got, uh, the, you know, event got processed by the web based CHA uh, nano app. So on the right, it's actually kind of a similar demo, but it's, uh, you know, uh, it's GPS uh, uh, signal handling. And, uh, you know, basically a nano app query the, uh, the CHI system for uh, position data. And then once you get the data, you know, you send it to nano app and the process that data. So, so, um, so we talk about, you know, this challenging uh, runtime environment uh, with extremely limited resources. So, so based on our prototype, you know, even with all those wrapper and all those data converters that we added and a uh, managed runtime, you know, more than runtime added into it, uh, we only increased the memory footprint by, you know, roughly 300 K by. Uh, so that's usually, you know, it's uh, acceptable for the CH environment. Uh, you know, it depends on, you know, highly depends on like uh, the, uh, you know, manufacturers and they can vary between a few hundred k, k byte to, uh, to two meg. Uh, and uh, that's, you know, well within the acceptable range. Uh, and uh, the, the memory usage, you know, we only observe like a two to 11% increase. So it's not significant. Okay, so uh, so what have we learned uh, from this project? Uh, so uh, you know we think we achieve our design goal that is uh, have WebAssembly and the uh, original native CHI application uh, working side by side and interoperable, uh, and we prove that's actually achievable within the CHI environment with uh, you know uh, very small. Uh, you know, resource usage by the WebAssembly runtime and the WebAssembly, uh, you know, uh, nano app. Uh, so uh, we think, you know, this sort of approach can be useful for, uh, you know, some other, uh, you know, embedded environment framework as well. Uh, however, uh, we will say that, uh, you know, this is not an ideal solution. Uh, you know, you can see like uh, there's a lot of uh, intermediate layer. We had to add the wrapper, uh, to you know, to kind of a propagate the event and uh, pass the call between the two systems. Uh, so the reason, you know, the main reason for that is really, you know, big due to the like the uh, architecture difference between CHIE and the WebAssembly. Uh, and you know, CHIE basically assume uh, you know uh, memory share everything kind of approach rather than you know memory isolation mechanism in a, a WebAssembly. Uh, and, uh, you know, the API call, for example, the data structure they use to pass call, it's all through the uh, global share heap. So we think if we can design a CHIE from ground up with WebAssembly, we can probably have a much better optimized, uh, you know, solution for that. We can uh, probably use like a message passing or serialization as opposed to share memory for, for, for those, uh, you know, interaction between the the runtime and the, the app. Uh, so uh, that's something that, uh, uh, you know, definitely, you know, depend on community interest that we can, uh, you know, work towards that direction for a better solution in the future. So that's pretty much my talk. Any questions? Uh, excuse me, I have actually a little bit of time to uh, understand what you say. You know, could you say louder and uh, move, maybe move closer? <laughs>
Oh, uh, so um, yeah, so so CHI environment, you know, uh, it's low power and it's resource constrained and it has like extremely limited OS capability, right? And that's the reason, you know, uh, a simple share memory, share everything approach was used. And it's definitely not the, you know, most secure mechanism. And it's also limiting the, you know, the opportunity for innovation. You know, just think about what kind of thing you can do. Like, you know, for example, like one uh, nano app that we constantly use, we may not be aware of it. It's like a step count, right? Uh, so when you walk, you know, it counts how many steps. It looks like a pretty simplistic, right? Uh, you know, use some periodical movement, uh, you know, signal of your sensor data and to calculate how many steps you, you have walked, right? And based on our personal experience, we know like there's good ones, there's bad ones, right? Some are like really horrible. They are not accurate at all. Uh, and some are a lot better, right? So, so uh, you know, this is an area that you can actually have a lot of opportunity for innovation. You know, one example, like if you, you know, uh, build some sort of machine learning capability into your step, in your movement, you know, this step count could be a lot more uh, accurate, right? Uh, so in a kind of a semi-closed environment with like a very risky, uh, you know, security isolation, uh, you know, I think Google would not be open it up to everybody. OEM would not be open up, willing to open it up because there's too much security risk to it, right? But if you move to WebAssembly, you know, this is potentially, people will come with all kind of innovative idea. So maybe the sensor data, you know, the, uh, you know, gyroscope and the couple with your GPS and, and something like a, this kind of a combination, you can come with a really innovative use model. Just like what happened to the app store, like people come with all kind of apps, right? Because it's open ecosystem, and uh, people can invent, you know, new methodology or new usage method, use, use cases, uh, and uh, this is not happening to CHIE. You know, reason is that, uh, you know, it's it's not um, built on solid architecture, uh, you know, on, on a solid architecture, so that uh, it's difficult to open it up. By moving to WebAssembly, I think it uh, should uh, give people this sort of a new opportunity, you know, to innovate. Any more questions? Okay, I guess uh, thank you for sticking around. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, and uh, I have contact information here. Uh, so Jin, Jin Jiang uh, uh, is the original author, the first author of this work. Uh, if you want to have like a detailed coding question, you know, shoot the email to him. Okay, thank you.